Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this video we're making a dungeon door. This episode is finishing off by sculpting those metal pieces. It should be suitable for following along, but I go fairly quickly through some aspects. Do check out the links in the description and the playlist on this channel and my website gabbit.co.uk for more free courses aimed at complete beginners right through to advanced levels. Okay, so before sculpting these objects, these sort of peripheral objects like this, I think we need to add some of these bars going across here, as you can see in the background image, and maybe some sort of hinge down the side here. Something very simple. So shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh, and we'll go for a cylinder. Let's just move that into position, see what it looks like. And I'm going nice and simple with this. One big hinge like this doesn't quite look right, so I think I will split it into two. I'll do that nice and simply just by grabbing the bottom face and moving that upwards. Scale Shift Z, so I don't scale in the Z axis. Move that into position. Shift D to duplicate in the Z axis and move that down. We've got two simple hinges there. I think the simple hinges work a little bit better and probably need to edit this slightly. So I'll move that end edges. G then X, move those in. Yep, that's fine. Same for this one. Select those end edges. G then X, move those in. I've still got the solidify modifier on, so I can just select that one edge and it moves the whole thing. Just making them a little bit fatter. There we go. So nice simple hinges. I think that looks a little bit more detailed and better. I think I'll reuse this. So Shift D and drag it over to here. Scale, Shift Z. And then just edit this into a bar that's going across the top. My origin point is here, so when I scale, it looks a little bit weird. It doesn't matter too much for the moment. I'll move that later on. I'm just roughly getting things in the right place. Actually, I think what might be easier is to just put these bars on the inside like this. That looks quite fun, really. Shouldn't really need too much editing, but I might just put a couple of loop cuts in and rotate it really slightly. Give it a little bit of distortion. So Control R, two loop cuts with the wheel, double left click and rotate that way slightly and rotate that way slightly. And we've got a bit of distortion on our bars. I think I like that look. Okay, one last thing is some bolts. So Shift A to add. Again, we'll have a cylinder. 12 sides should work nicely. We'll scale that down. Rotate by the X axis 90 degrees. Period key on my numpad to zoom in on that. Scale in the Y. G then Y, move that out. I'll be sculpting this. Once I've sculpted this one, I'll copy it and paste it into the other positions that I need them. For now, I'll just put a reference. So just Shift D and put that in these different positions so we can see where they're going. So when I'm sculpting the hinges and the brackets, I know where these bolts are going. Okay, so sculpting these should be a fairly quick process. Remember, you do need to reset the scale for all of them or apply the scale, I should say. I don't really think I need to sculpt much in here. I might need to just taper off the ends of these though. So Control A, set the scale. Let's start with the bigger bracket. On the two brackets, we will have to apply our solidify modifier. So Control A when you're over there. Same for this one, Control A. I think you can do them together now, but there's only two of them, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay, then into sculpt mode, zoom in on that object. Shift R to look at our remesh size. We can go fairly fine because we've got all the detail we need. So 0 0.006 for me, Control R to remesh, and then get the scrape brush. Nice and wobbly across the top there. Now in the orb brush set, there's a really nice bashed metal look. So I'll append those in. I'll put a card in the corner for how to set up these brushes and a link in the description to the brush set. So if we go to file, append, we can bring in our orb brushes. We just go into that blender file, into the brushes, and any that have orb in their name, select them and add them in. Now let's go across to the draw brush. And in here, I've got lots of useful brushes, the hammered metal is quite a nice one. It's got a great sort of hammered metal look now. Nice and simple that was. This one as well, the sort of rockiness that actually helps in terms of a sort of rusty look. You have to have a fairly good detail for this to work. I've not got it particularly high, but I think it's working just about. There's also some nice crack type brushes. They're much the same as the draw sharp, but you might prefer those in some ways. There's not a lot in it really. Might go a little bit finer. You can go pretty fine with this to add some nice details and those scratches and things. But again, it does depend on your computer. And just once more quickly around with a scrape brush to give it that real stylized look. Just creating a little bit of a dent where the rivets are as if they've sort of been hammered in. 
Now, if you spend ages on this and you don't want to create it again, you can just copy it down and then move it about a bit. I don't think it takes too long, so I'll just repeat the process. I'll just check what resolution I had here. So 0 0.003. So into sculpt mode, shift R, and we should be able to go right down to that really. So there's not much change in shape. Let's get the scrape on first. Got my brush fairly big to go for a sort of chunky stylized look. Get my draw brush out. Give it that bash metal look. Might create a really big one like this to just give it a little bit of variation. And then smaller ones like this. My sort of rust brush that I quite like. Normal draw brush, give it a bit of a dent. A few scrapes maybe, I can use the draw sharp for that. That's in exactly the same place, so be careful. Funny how your mind does that. Okay, so that's those brackets. Let's go in and edit one of these. About 0.008 for this with a remesh and just simply go around with the scrape. Nothing too spectacular here. I feel like it needs to go finer actually. Yep, that's a nice rivet. Just go back into layout mode and copy that across to the other places. Shift D, move that down for duplicating and just get rid of the originals. A little bit on the hinges. So same as usual, so I'll speed this up. Quick remesh to increase the detail. Fairly fine for this, scrape the edges and then use that bashed metal brush just to add some interesting detail. And I thought I'd separate the hinges out so they look more like a hinge. Uh, once I've done that, copy it and paste it to the bottom. That's working fairly nicely. Same with the handle. First quick remesh. Again, starting with the scrape brush. You can start off with a bit of symmetry in the X and Z just to save time. So I've got the symmetry on just for the scrape brush and just doing that first initial stages. Then I'll turn symmetry off and use the grab brush. Obviously I'm speeding things up here now because it's all much the same using that scrape brush to scrape around the edges, adding that ore brush with the bash metal to give it some sort of style. With the torus here, I thought I might as well up the resolution by just adding a subdivision surface modifier. You could add a more detailed torus in the first place and you wouldn't have to do that, but it's easier than trying to smooth the whole mesh out because the remesh will give it sort of a lumpy bumpy feel. Went into isolation mode for a moment there as well, just to sort of separate it from the background and make it easier. At this point, I decided a little bit more variation on the skull at the top by using the ore brushes again. I thought I'd use the bash metal on it just to give it a bit of variation and undulations across the skull shape. Uh, same with the horns, either side. And there we have it, the final sculpt. For those that are interested in how I set up the shaders and materials, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll do another video on that. Thanks for watching, thanks for all your support and I'll see you next time.